Welcome to the Chrome Enterprise Technical Community Hour. Today we'll be talking about progressive web apps, otherwise known as PWAs. My name is Rich and I'll be your host for today's presentation. Joining me today, I have our speaker, Adriana Hara, who's a developer relations engineer for Chrome OS. For today's agenda, I'll start with a quick introduction of the Chrome Enterprise Recommended Program and the Technical Community Hour. Then I'll hand it over to Adriana and she'll cover today's topic and the call to action for our Chrome partners. Today's Chrome Technical Community Hour is brought to you by the Chrome Enterprise Recommended Program, which is Google's partner program for third-party solutions that are optimized for Chrome OS or integrated with Chrome Browser. This webinar brings you the opportunity to engage with our team about new features and updates, enterprise development best practices, and our enterprise strategy. Now, without further ado, I'll pass it over to Adriana and she'll kick us off. Adriana? Hi, I'm Adriana Hanna. I'm a developer relations engineer for Chrome and the web. Um, give me just one second to switch to the presentation so that I have the power. Okay, hopefully you are now seeing my screen. Yay. Um, so what are we going to do um, today? Um, first of all, we are going to uh, walk you through what PWAs are. We're going to talk about some features in a specific. And uh, at the end, we have a form for you to fill with your feedback on the capabilities and maybe you are missing a capability that we should bring to the web for making your web app happen. Um, first of all, I know that the term PWA is not the easiest thing to define. If you search in Google what a PWA is, you get hundreds of definitions. Um, so I encourage you to see for the purpose of this presentation, and also for life, see PWA as the toolbox to create these app-like experiences. It is the capabilities that enable businesses to create polished experience deployed and built on the web that comply with the mental model that users have on what an app is. Um, I will walk you through the reasons that it is important that we have the ability to create these web apps. Um, and I want to start by talking why it is important that we have web apps. I don't know you, but I want to know why I'm investing my time in checking out these capabilities and adding them to my site. Like, what are the benefits that it brings that we have web apps? And it is important to talk about why, because in terms of the web, they tend to have like a little bit of a not so glamorous reputation and we hear a lot of like why not why not have a app experience on the web for example some of the things that we hear apps are capable the web is not and yes sometimes it is definitely easier to launch on a single platform when all we have to care is that platform so we have new features there than the web that serves all users across browsers across platforms but yet even though if it is sometimes slower to come to the web even before the capabilities that i'm talking about powerful apps that people access directly on the web have existed. People have built entire businesses around these apps. We have Google Docs, we have banking systems, we have education hubs, we have uh, customer support hubs that people know how to access and how to use just on the web. And even though we tend to say like, oh, the, the web is not as powerful, we also use web features embedded in our platform apps. We, as the um, web platform, have to give developers the tools so that they can reuse the features that they build in the web because there is interest of 
using these features that you build on the web once and you can use across platforms. So instead of seeing the web as not as powerful, I see it as powerful because of the usage that it has. Uh, another why not that we often hear is users like apps. Yes, this is true. I've heard them like I, I like the access on my home screen. I like to have it running on login. But there's also the cost of maintaining multiple apps. It is very costly in terms of resource, knowledge. There is also the issue that I think more than apps, users like a consistent experience. They like to know how to use this technology that they are using. And the web is actually the platform that allows you with a single polished UI, especially with the latest CSS features like scroll-driven animations and view transitions to give the users this consistency, this knowing of using your product across multiple devices, which is important because it is a fact that users use apps across multiple devices. We have some tasks that we do on a small screen, maybe it's a really fast check, or maybe it's not all the features, but we use our phone and we like to continue doing the same apps that we use on desktop. So it is important to have availability for our users in these platforms. And the web seems to be the platform that actually give us less maintenance cost. The last uh, counter argument that I'm going to talk about today is we often hear users don't understand web apps. Maybe, but even if this is true, <clears throat> users do understand products. We don't hear users saying, look, I use the YouTube app or I use the YouTube website. They say, I use YouTube. So what is important is that relationship with the user that understands their product, your product, and how to access it. And also users adapt. The truth is like, if you would have told me a couple of years ago that a simple game for guessing words would have taken the entire world and everybody was gonna be using it and it wasn't even installable, I would not have believed it. And I work on the web. But the, the thing is like people adopted adopted Wordle without worrying if people were going to understand how to use a URL or not. People still understand these concepts. So instead of, once I have talked about the why nots, we also don't talk often about the superpowers that are unique to web apps, the why yes that already exist. And a really big one is the web. It's where users already are. The web is where we go for search. The web is where business show their advertisement because that's how users access them. It's where we go for en entertainment. And like you might notice the first thing that you do when you have a new idea, when you're launching a product, is you reserve the domain name. And it's because you know that's where things go viral. That's how you access your users. So why not give your users that app experience just one click away right from the web where they find you? There's also the superpower of the web that the experience that we build on the web are meant to be shared by everyone. And when we talk about a successful product, we talk a product about a product that is used by a lot of people, that is shared by a lot of people. So the web gives us that, gives us that virality by making it easy to share. It is the place to collaborate face to face. We all like, like having one link at the Google Doc, everybody jumps in and can see the changes live without worrying if someone hasn't downloaded the app or someone doesn't have the right platform. Uh, accessing meetings. We all like just one uh, click away and we're all talking. 
playing games at the same time. These are things that platform apps still have not catch up with the web. So again, why not take advantage of that? So hopefully now that I have given you some incentives of paying attention to how can you serve your users better on the web, I can give you a little bit of the toolbox. The first hurdle that usually developers have to jump for accessing these capabilities is enabling inst installation for their website. And it is important to consider adding installation for your web app because it unlocks other features that otherwise we don't have, like displaying as a standalone app, accessing to home screen, docs, being able to share with other platform apps. And so it's not about just telling the user that you are installable, but also about the advantages that it gives you to re-engage your user. And on the screen, there is a link that gives you instructions on how to make your web app installable. But it is very likely that you don't want to stay with just making your app installable and figure that users will get to install your app just on their own without any help. Because even though users adapt, the truth is, um, the knowledge about how to install a web app is not as common. So for now, we want to help them get there. They know that the install that they are seeing in the browser is not the install that they know because the install that they know is the one on app stores. So how can we help them get to that install and to keep your app? That's the, the goal. <clears throat> One of the things that we can do is create a custom install flow. And I'll show you instructions on how to do that or where to get the instructions. The important bit here is that you can show your own controls for installation. And at the time that you show those controls, you can tell the user what advantages are there for them to keep your app. I have this example through the entire presentation and it's just a little demo app for counting stitches for people that need. So it tells people like, if you install me, you can have me everywhere. And whether you have connection or not, you can use it. And in these kind of things that for every business is gonna be specific, but it really helps your user understand your product. With a custom install flow, some of the benefits that you will see is that you can add the instructions. So you're going to increase the chance that a user is going to install your app because maybe they are not familiar with the browser UI, but they are familiar with your product and they're going to see those custom controls easier than the generic, generic ones from the browser. You can choose the best time to prompt. And again, this is based on your business. Maybe if you are an e-commerce site, the best time to prompt is af after they created an order and they can um, track the shipment. Maybe it's after they added a, a product to the cart and then you can tell them like, you can, we can send you promo codes via notifications, things like that. And you can also collect metrics to improve the experience. And, and um, make more accurate these where to prompt and which controls the users prefer to get to keep your app, to capture your users, to come back to your app. And now here are the instructions for creating this uh, custom install. And if you need access to the QR code, you can pause and then we continue. So I'll keep going. Another capability that we have available for creating this more familiar install UI, it's called the Richer Install UI. And it consists of a larger dialog that allows developers to add a description and a screenshots of their apps as it runs in a standalone mode. It helps users because they are more familiar with the install from the app stores that looks a little bit more like this and it gives the 
developers an opportunity to highlight and tell once again the user why they should keep the app as a standalone app. To implement this feature, it's a relatively simple change from your web app manifest. You add the array of screenshots. Those are the screenshots that are going to show of the app and the description, telling the user what the app does and why they should install it. Just a note for if your web app runs on different form factors, you can indicate which form factor is for which screenshot using the field form factor. In the case of desktops, is form factor white. Another feature that we don't talk, or we don't talk in so many terms about the web, it's look, it can work without internet. And we have talked in the past about websites working without internet to give users maybe a better experience, but just letting the user know like, hey, uh, you cannot do anything because you have no internet or it, even it used to be a requirement to have some sort of offline experience for being installable. That is no longer the case, but moreover, uh, we don't talk often enough what a differentiator working without internet can be. And it's probably impossible that you can offer all of the functionality of your app without internet, because it is meant to be shared. It is meant to be used um, with other people. But there might be some features, some characteristics that your users still can use and is worth investing for adding that audience for your product. So you don't have to implement your entire app, but the idea is like you can be the app that users reach when they are in airplane mode or they don't have the right connectivity. It, depends on how often this is needed, depending on the infrastructure where you're used. Um, but definitely, hands down, if I have, a, I don't know, a to-do task app, and I have one version that just tells me, you have no internet, you cannot do anything, and I have another one that lets me add my tasks and they will be synced afterwards, I'm going to go with the second one, right? So this is what you want to bring to your users. And um, look, I know that the demo app is just um, a small app with limited features, but with a couple of lines of code, a couple of um, using caches, some local storage, these apps functionality, it's completely available even when users are offline. But don't get the perception that being available for offline is only for a small products or a small businesses. We have the case of YouTube that enabled the capabilities of downloading videos and still being able to review the videos when you don't have connection. They increase their piece of their audience to those users that go on the subway and want to see uh, watch YouTube and you can read all about the technical details of what they had to do on the link. Moreover, as I mentioned before, if you want to implement some of this offline capability, you will have to use things like background sync to detect when the user comes back online and sync the data. And you will probably will have to save the data locally in the meantime and you need caching so that the resources are available when the person doesn't have a connection and you can reach your servers the good thing is like as you invest in building these features the same technologies that you're going to be using are going to help you when the users are online because when we use caching for for example we are 
uh, avoiding or delaying a trip to the network and that those resources tend to be served faster and makes your app more performant, more resilient, and gives the user a better user experience overall. Not only the ones that access it when they are offline, but also your regular users that do it when they are online. Moving on to another um, characteristic of web apps that it's very popular, but it's also very unpopular. <laughs> And I know that it's a hard journey to implement notifications. It's hard for users, it's hard for the browser, it's hard for developers. But the thing is, like, it's so important for developers to engage their users with notifications. And we users do want timely, well-designed notifications. For example, some of the things that come on to mind that we do use notifications. When there is somewhere that I need to be, my calendar notifications are on, it's important for me. When there is an action I need to, to take, let's say a subscription is expiring and I need to renew or cancel, I'm gonna have those notifications on. When there is something fun that I wanna do, I don't wanna have notifications for all the stores in the world, but maybe the ones that I buy on frequently, I want them to send them send me discounts. I have this app that is for playing board games across the world and it sends me notifications when it's my turn. I'm gonna have them on. So we have to have that chance to connect with our users. Maybe you need chat notifications because it's part of your work. We have to offer it, but it is definitely good to have certain design patterns to increase the chances that the users are gonna keep them on and respect the user also as when and how they wanna use our notifications. One thing that helps is to guide the users before the browser pop-up, we will still have to ask for permissions. That is not changing. Chrome is working on making it better and more user-friendly, but they will have to accept the permission, but you can tell the users before the pop-ups surprise them, you are going to see this pop up, click yes on the notification because I'm going to send you discounts if you do. Use dialogues and tooltips as um, required for guiding the user on your own UI. You are closer to the user. It's better that it comes from you than the generic one from the browser that the user might not be sure why it is showing, where it is coming from, use those UI elements that you have available and let them know why your notifications will be useful. They might need a little bit convincing. If they're gonna click yes, they need to know what is it that they are getting from this. And as I was saying, let them know that they have the power to check the configuration, whether they wanna receive notifications or not, that they can turn them on and off whenever they want. For example, Google um, Chat on desktop has a page for your notifications. You can choose your sound and you can turn them on and off. So, you know, it also has other features for turn, turning them off and snoozing and all that, but it's important that users understand they have the power to interact with your notifications. In terms of implementation, you usually create your UI elements, you schedule your notifications and you receive them via a service worker and you show the notification, the user interacts with it. Awesome. If you want the very technical details on how to do it step by step, you can follow the link on the description, on the screen. Now I'm gonna go a little bit on uh, a uh, rapid fire of some other features that you can explore in PWA. It's not an extensive uh, list, but it's some of the exciting ones that I and other developers like um, to start. One that goes well with notifications that I was just talking about. It's the badging API. It lets you add a visual indication, a little dot, or the number of notifications that people have on the app. 
let them know that there is something that is happening in the app and they should check it out. We also have shortcuts that help you save users time by adding this little quick actions menu and lets you add help the user go from the screen wherever they are seeing your app icon to directly the action that they want to create making it easier to come back to your app and do their work we also have this um opportunity to get creative with windows controls overlay and like make your app really belong in the operating system and windows control overlay what it allows you is to take charge of the title bar in the window and here you can see i modified the demo app so that it has its own controls in that little toolbar and i've seen it again in media players and you have the controls there you can display information about um, your notifications any timely thing that a user can uh, take advantage of right in there <clears throat> another feature it's that your app can handle files. It used to be a pain to do files on the web. You had to upload the file, modify the file, download the file, and hope that it was OK. Otherwise, you had to go do the same thing <laughs> over and over. Right now, you can even configure your app so that it handles files on a double click. Like any other app, it opens in your app, you make your notifications, you click save, goes directly to the file system. Next, we have um, run and login. It is possible to tell your users, like, look, I am a chat app. You want to have me when you run on login, and they go and configure a click away. And the reason that I did the rapid fire, it's because in the past couple of years, it is a lot of features that have been launched. And frankly, I don't think you want me talking for days about each of every one of them. But I encourage you to go check out which feature will make your user's life better. You know your users better. You know what is it that is going to make them happy and more engaged. So. You know, because of this, you know better what is it that your app needs to go to that next level and serve your users across devices, across platforms. You'll have the ideas. We do have the documentation. If you want to learn more, you can go to web.dev slash learn slash PWA or web.dev slash PWA. The first one is a curse step by step uh, how to create one of these installable apps and some of these features. And the second one is an overview. Lastly, if you want to get your word in with the team that is building these features, if you have an idea of how to make any of these features better, my team is all ears. We're very, very interested. If you have a blocker that is preventing you from launching your product on the web, we would also like to hear from you. So please use the link in the screen to communicate with us and let us know what are your thoughts about these capabilities. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. I am looking forward for your feedback. Thank you, Adriana. I'm gonna go ahead and switch really quick so we can wrap up. All right, please join us um, in our next webinar on August 23rd. That's going to be about storage for progressive web apps. Registration is now open, so please visit the Technical Community Hour website to register. In closing, please visit the Chrome Enterprise Developer website for additional information to supplement your learning. That concludes today's presentation. We look forward to seeing you at the next webinar. Thanks for joining, and have a great day.